Good evening, everybody. My name is Paul Koch. I'm the chair of the Zoning Board of Appeals. We've got lots of other stuff to do, but we open the meeting just with the Pledge of Allegiance, and then we will get to business. So if everyone would, please rise and recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag. United States of America. Republic. For which it stands. One nation. Under God. Indivisible. With liberty and justice for all. And that is, I'm not going to speak for anybody, but there is a delay, and I think we get three or four recitations of the Pledge of Allegiance out of that. Uh, so I am going to open with the uh, with Governor Baker's um, uh, notice, I guess. Everybody bear with me. It's about 12 single-space lines, very small font. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 18, and the Governor's July 2, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place, this meeting of the Town of North Andover Zoning Board of Appeals will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and the general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with a right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the Town of North Andover website www.northandoverma.gov. For this meeting only, members of the public who wish to watch the meeting may do so on their televisions by tuning into North Andover Cam EV Comcast Channel 99 or Verizon Channel 28 or online at www.northandovercam.org. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time by technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so despite best efforts, we will post on the Town of North Andover website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive records of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. If the public would like to participate in public hearings, please email your questions or your comments prior to or even during this meeting to J Battersby, J B as in boy, A, T as in Tom, T as in Tom, E R S as in Sam, B as in boy, Y, at northandoverma.gov. The question or comment will be read during the proceedings and responded to accordingly. A copy of the application and supporting documents are on file in the Zoning Board of Appeals 120 Main Street, North Andover, Massachusetts, and may be viewed on the Town of North Andover website at www.northandovermay.gov. A couple of other quick announcements is, although it sounds obvious, this is uh, a recorded meeting. <clears throat> we are over the telephone line, so we got to make that announcement so everybody knows. And anybody who does not want to consent to being recorded on this telephone call uh, should probably exit the call because the point of this is to be recorded. The next item I have for us is let's just do a uh, roll call. I'm just going to go in order of the of the letterhead here. I'll I am here. Ellen McIntyre. I'm present. Ellen Kusha. Not present. Would you mark that? Jen. Alexandria Jacobs. Present. Ann Fagan. Present. Michael Liss. Present. Stephen Seide. Present. Frank Killalay. Present. Uh, also on the phone for everybody's edification, Jennifer Battersby. She is the zoning administrator. Uh, we also have Paul Hutchins. Uh, he is the uh, code enforcement officer and we uh, and the building inspector. And we also have Golly, I didn't write down his last name, but certainly the bill from NACAM is uh, recording the proceedings. Um, <clears throat> if anybody thinks I've forgotten anything, just yell it out because I'm just winging it. If nobody says anything, then I'm just going to carry on and say that the next item on the agenda is the acceptance of minutes for September 8th, 2020, and that's last month, obviously. Uh, is there any discussion? And if not, then is there a motion? I, will move, I will move to approve the minutes. That was Ron making the motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. That was Steve seconding. Motion made and seconded. Uh, uh, I guess I'm going to have to call, call the roll, aren't I? Uh, everybody was here last month, so let's go. The line, Ron, uh, Ron Fagan. Aye. Alexandria. Aye. Thank you. Ellen McIntyre. Aye. 
Uh, I'm an I, uh, but, but let's let's get an associate. Since Alan's not here, we'll get a, a five-member vote. I'm just going to start at the top. Uh, Michael, Michael List. Aye. So we have five ayes, which means that the minutes are approved 5-0. The next item on the agenda, Carrie, 369 Waverly Road. Mr. Kusha is not in attendance. Therefore, Andrea Jacobs is the acting clerk tonight. Ms. Jacobs, if you would kindly read the notice. Notice is hereby given that North Andover Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing remotely via conference call on Tuesday, October 6, 2020 at 7.30 p.m. to all parties interested in the petition of the Winslow Drive Realty Group, LLC, Brian J. Boyle Manager for the property at 303 Chestnut Street, a.k.a. Lot 1 Hillside Road, Map 098B, Parcel 0008. North End of a Mass 01845 in the R3 zoning district. The applicant is requesting a variance pursuant to the Town of North Andover zoning bylaws section 195-7.1a for contiguous, contiguous building area CBA in the R3 zoning district for the purpose of reconstructing a single family home on a vacant lot. Specifically, applicant has requested CBA needing a relief variance of 5,718 square feet i.e. 23%, the CPA proposed is 13,032 square feet, i.e. 52%, and the CBA required is 18,750 square feet, i.e. 75%. Applications supporting materials are available for review by appointment only at the Office of the Zoning Department located at 120 Main Street, North Andover, Mass. On what? Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday from the hours of 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., Tuesday from the hours of 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m., and Friday from the hours of 8 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. By order of the Board of Appeals, D. Paul Koch, Jr., Esquire Chairman. Thank you, Alexandria. <clears throat> and now, uh, just to kind of take attendance, uh, I believe there could be others, but I've heard that there are at least two folks from the applicants that are on the line. Would you kindly introduce yourselves, your names and addresses or affiliations, please? Uh, Brian Boyle, uh, Winslow Drive Realtor Group, LLC. My address is 24 Winslow Drive, Atkinson, New Hampshire. Thank you, Mr. Boyle. I believe there's an, an attorney on the line. Is that right? Could be muted. Perhaps not. <laughs> Mr. Boyle, are you expecting Mr. Byers to? He, yes, he. <laughs> uh, Google mute is star six to undo, just in case. He must have, because uh, he said a few minutes ago he was on. He did. He did. Hello? Is, is that Mr. Attorney Byers? Okay, I'll try this again. Okay. I sent him a text. <laughs> All right. We'll give it we'll give it a second with this technology this technology stuff doesn't always work for everybody. Perhaps Mr. Byers is just a little bit uh uh he's as old as I am, so he's a dinosaur. Perhaps not facile. Am I, am I correct to understand that he, he uh, said he was on like five minutes ago? I, I heard him say he was here. Yeah. But now, now when we need him on the record, he's hiding. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I just got a text from him. He says he's having trouble logging in, uh, but he is he is trying to log in now. <clears throat> and I'm return texting asking him if he wants my nine year old. He knows how to do this stuff. <clears throat> Hello. 
Well, I appreciate you waiting and your patience here. No, fortunately, either fortunately or unfortunately, this is the only thing on the agenda. So I am nothing but excited to get uh, to get this over and through. So I'm I'm certainly prepared to wait. If we had other items on the agenda, we'd probably just hop ahead. Mm -hmm. But this is a nice, clean, easy one. Yeah, and the Patriots game was last night. So. Hello. Uh, I'm is that fired? Oh my God. <laughs> I've been on for 45 minutes and then I couldn't, you couldn't hear me. Sorry about that. That's, Can that's, you hear me now? That's life in the fast thing. Yeah, we've got you, Mr. Byers. Would you kindly- oh, I apologize. Kindly just introduce yourself, uh, name and address it or and or affiliation to the applicant, please. Yes, it's attorney Richard Byers. My address is 807 Turnpike Street, North Andover. All right, thank you very much. And you're representing the applicant, is that correct? That is correct, Mr. Chairman. All right, well, we've got a handful, handful of materials, but we always open by saying the floor is yours, Attorney Byers. Tell us what's going on with this. Okay, um, sure. Uh, a brief history of this property. A lot of you would probably know the area. It's at the, right at the corner of Hillside and Chestnut. Um, it, for the longest, for, for many years, going back to 1950, there was a red cape there, and a lot of people knew it as the Busby House. Um, so back in uh, 2016, we had the, the Red Cape or uh, the Busby House, and it was uh, situated on three separately divided parcels of land. Um, then uh, the Busbys and my uh, client, you know, worked out a, a deal to redevelop the site. Um, and at the time, uh, went to the planning board and in conjunction and with Conservation decided that two lots would make more sense over there. Um, did get a plan uh, approved by uh, the planning board back in 2016. Um, the plan is on record. Um, then uh, proceeded to uh, build, actually then went to conservation and uh, you can see the conservation land, everything has been approved by conservation. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Boyle went ahead and uh, part of the order of conditions built a nice stone wall uh, to separate the uh, buffer zone from the rest of the lot. Um, and on lot uh, two, proceeded to build uh, a, a house that a lot of people probably would recognize. It's a large, beautiful uh, gray house that was built on lot two. Um, then uh, moving forward, um, we uh, went back, Mr. Uh, Boyle went back to get a building permit on lot one. And um, unfortunately now after um, the conservation approval and everything, um, and, and um, the fact that now we're, we're not using the, the buffer zone um, as part of the contiguous buildable lot, it's a large, extremely large lot. It's um, it, it, the lot size is 31,196 feet, uh, square feet, um, which is way more than the 25,000 required. We are short now with the contiguous buildable lot because we are not including the buffer zone in the calculation. So I've been working with, uh, I worked with Gene Enright and I've been working with Paul uh, Hutchins, who's been uh, very helpful. And uh, we thought the best course of action would be to try to get a variance. Um, so it could, you know, go ahead and build a lot, build this property, you know, build the lot out and build a house on it. Um, and I did want to point out that the area that Mr. Boyle is looking to build or have built on would be the exact location where the previous Busby house was located from 1950 to about 2016. Um, so that's where we are at this point. What are do you, are you do you need to be before any other boards on this? But I missed no, no, nope. nope. It's uh we have a planning board uh already endorsed planning board uh, agree, uh plan that's been recorded, um and conservation. There's an order of conditions um from going back to when the lot the lots were developed. Uh, so conservation has already like I said um they've already uh, approved these lots and. Um, you know, and it, again, um, Mr. Boyle's followed everything in the order of conditions that was required, including building uh, stone walls. 
So no, just, it's just owning. If I might ask, this is Mike Liss. Um, if I might ask, the current building that is there, that is also within the 100-foot buffer zone, correct? Like, I'm, I'm looking at the lines, and I, I don't think I have a map that explicitly says it, but it looks like it should be. Yes. Correct. Brian, right? Brian? That, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah exactly. Uh, but at the time that house was built, um, it the I, I don't know, you know, I don't know if it's a different interpretation of the bylaws. There was no... Um, there was no contiguous buildable lot uh, issue on that one. Okay. And again, just to point out, I mean, the lot size itself, it's, it's as you can see on the plan, 31,196 square feet. Way, no other variances are, are we're asking for. There's no, um, no other variances needed. It fits nicely in that lot. And for for clarity and for the record, uh, looking looking at the uh, the proposed plan and the building is <clears throat> uh, at least some of the building is going to be in the hundred foot buffer zone. You, for the again for clarity on the record, there is no relief needed for for that. Is that's that correct? correct. That, that's correct. So therefore, if we're not really <clears throat> Um, and again, this is just for amplification purposes, because every time we get into buffer zones, I automatically think that we're messing with wetlands. And in this case, we are not. The reason that we are, uh, the reason that this application caused uh, the any area inside the buffer zone is not included in this A calculation. <clears throat> so we have enough land, we just don't have enough available land, you know, by virtue of the definitions or the vagaries of the wetlands bylaw. Correct. That's correct. But yeah, we won't be building anywhere near the wet the wetlands. And this this is this is me metaphorically looking up and down the table, uh, encouraging any any board members with comments, questions, or concerns, feel free to jump in. So I, I, this is Ron. Um, I just want to make sure that I, my understanding is correct, and then I probably will ask a couple of questions that I, I should know the answers to. Um, there was sufficient building area before there was a change in the um, laws regarding wetlands. Is that correct? So, so the, the lot was conforming until a different law changed. I may, maybe Paul can jump in. Uh, Hutchins. Um, I, I believe that's the case, yeah. Um, it, again, with the, the other property, it wasn't an issue, um, you know, the other lot. So, um, in fact, the engineer who drew the plan, actually the plan that was endorsed by the planning board showed... Um, they thought they had 30,407 square uh, contiguous buildable lot because he included the, the buffer zone. But if you take the buffer zone out, then we're sure. Right, but the but the the the, the, buff, the buffer zone. If I read the package correctly, the buffer zone regulation came in afterwards, and that is what made the lot non-conforming. Prior to that, the law the, the lot was conforming. It had sufficient square footage. That that's my understanding. All right. The the package also said that there are any number of cases where um, building has been done similar to this, where it hinges on the buffer zone. Um, I, I don't take that as a matter of fact, unless somebody can tell me like we're there. I mean, I I don't know if that's true. You want me to take a shot at this, Rick? Uh, yeah. Well, sure. I'll go out on the limb and tell you that's 80 to 90 percent of what's going on in the town of North Andover is in that case. Because what the law we're referring to happened in 1998. So you have several projects um, that that's just been the, the norm, if you will, the generally accepted practice um, that the um, the 
contiguous buildable area is calculated by the surveyors or whatever and uh, engineers. That's yeah, in fact, this gentleman, Dal Donho, has done several projects in North Andover in 19 since 1998. So, I don't have a list of them off the top of my head, and, um, but that is there's nothing unusual about about this in terms of where where the house is being located, um, and and actually the lot we have in front of the board tonight is larger than it was before we went to the planning board. So we, we made the lot bigger, which we didn't, right. we didn't have to, we just, it, we, it just made sense because there was three separate deeded lots, three taxed, they were individually taxed, but they were, my opinion, they were kind of tight. But uh, so we got rid of the lot in the middle and gave some land to the lot to the right and the lot to the left, just made two nicer lots. And this house, Brian, will right will be in the same location as the Busby House. You'll be in the same location as the Busby House, and and again, when we went through, as you sorry in your packets, uh, the previous building inspector, you know, right, right, wrong, or different, we actually Phil Busby pulled a, a demo permit and and said, hey, so I just um, just other, you know, I've been around for a few years, and this is Phil, but. Sometimes historically, some boards will still inspectors will say, "Well, listen, you got to you got to leave the wall up to grandfather zoning." So, well, that wasn't deemed necessary when we pulled a demo permit. So, okay, we didn't leave the wall up. So, so I'm, you know, to help Rick Byers on this board, all I'm, all I'm trying to do is <laughs> put a house there that has been there since late the late forties. All right, and for, forgive me if, if I should know these things, but first, what's an ANR? I'm sorry, what? ANR? ANR. Oh, the ANR plan from the planning board? It's a, approval not required. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And the second one, just from a conservation standpoint, if somebody can answer this, it would help me. You have the no build area near the wetlands, and then you've got this buffer zone, which is another 50 feet. So therefore, what what is the conservation risk of building in the buffer zone when you all still have the no build zone? Well, you don't. Want, I don't want to speak for conservation, but no. that is that is pretty typical, if you will. That uh, uh, most towns have the clearly twenty five feet no disturb zone, and then North Andover, what they have, which I think is pretty typical. Of most places I've worked. At, that's out of protection that they want they they will call off 50 feet off the edge of wetlands it's just out of protection for the wetlands and anything that is within 100 feet of a uh, wetland is within the uh, approval um, and requirements of, of a hearing to conservation that's why we had to go to conservation first and it's clearly within the jurisdiction you can't you cannot do anything um, without conservation approval, if you were going to do do anything within the hundred foot buffer zone, but so it, you will see you will build in the buffer zone, and I've never seen anyone build twenty five within twenty five feet of the uh, wetlands. No. So, so it's an insurance policy, basically. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Thank you for that engagement, Ron. Again, looking up and down the table, is there anyone from the board? Um, this is Ellen. Uh, hi, Rick. How you doing? Um, Good, Ellen. How are you? Quick question. This is like an odd, I went by this last week. This is such an odd lot. Um, just to clarify, the entrance and the address is on Hillside Road, correct? Correct. If you went, if you went by it, Ellen, you will you will notice there was a uh, bulldozer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah. That, actually, that actually belongs to a, a, a resident. He's, I guess, he plows the, the state police, and I said, yeah, I don't care. I'm not doing it. You can leave there right now. It's not mine. Um, but um, anyhow, you'll, you'll see there's a break in the stone wall. That will be the. Uh, there's actually two breaks in the stone wall, but the, the one closest let's see the, the larger is where the driveway will be but yes the address will be 
Hillside Road. The Busby house was kitty cornered um, and we're just keeping it on everything on Hillside Road. And, and I believe in the time yeah. of Andover, I think it's the water department that actually assigns the addresses. So I don't know what the formal address is going to be. I know that the house I built next door was actually 40 Hillside Road, so I don't really know the address. I keep calling it lot one because I don't know the street address. It has water and sewer and natural gas because there was an existing house there. It's already there. Thank you. Anyone else from the board? All right, taking my cue from the silence, if anybody is muted and scrambling to get back, don't feel free to interrupt me. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to show, go through, through the formality uh, um, of closing anything, but start introducing a little public comment. We got uh, an email from the Devons, who are, oh golly, at 311 Chestnut Street. I'm just going to read it in its entirety relatively quickly, just so that I can say it's been read into the record. Uh, and then kind of ask the applicant to comment if they would. Um, so this is from, looks like Joanne Devon. <clears throat> um, as a follow-up to our conversation today, our question applies to the condition of the lot in general. We have no objections to building an approved home on the lot, but would like to see the property cleaned up ASAP. As neighbors to the Busby's for many years, we were used to a scenic view next door. And when the property was sold to Mr. Boyle, we appeared at the hearing in favor of the construction of two homes, which should have been finished a couple of years ago. The first home went up quickly and is a great asset to the neighborhood, but the second lot has been allowed to deteriorate and become totally overgrown and essentially creating an eyesore with multiple trees down along the brook with stumps that go back to the original clearing for construction next door, all of which are very unattractive and serve as a haven for wild, an a haven for wild animals. When will the lot be cleared? In regards to Devon's 311 Chestnut Street. So if I could throw those comments to the applicant and see if they have a, a reaction. My, my, my reaction, quite frankly, is that I will totally agree with them. Um, that what they're referring to is, um, um, well, first of all, the lot is cleared. It's right now, it looks overgrown. So they had the pleasure of living beside the Busby's for years. And the place was always just groomed to the max. Um, and we really thought the, that we were going to have a house built there a while ago. And whether it was, you know, we, I live in this world that I'm uh, subject to market conditions. And then in the past 12 months, we've had this little permanent issue going back and forth where another North Andover builder had interest in building there and that, that fell apart over, over permitting. Um, and I have another North Andover family who would like to build there now, um, which I, no, it will not enter into my third contract because without a building permit, I just can cannot keep yeah, it. But, but I, will tell you, I, I will clearly, as the house looks next door, is how it will be left, and that, then hopefully it'll be sooner and later. So which yeah, I, think, I was going to I was going to say that right. Yeah, yeah, and it you know, and to me, it's I. But I, I agree with that family, and you know, and I can assure you that's how we usually leave all our jobs. So it's I'm sure pretty frustrating <laughs> for them. So I apologize for her and I will go out of my way to apologize the next time I see them. But that, that, that was never my intention, believe it or not. So th thank you for the commentary. I, I certainly appreciate the, um, the contrast between, you know, fin a finished lot next door and certainly the, the Busby's when they were there. Mm -hmm. Lot and then certainly mowing their lawn every weekend better. Um, I, I fully appreciate that we do live in the real world and delays uh, delays occur. Ordinarily, they're delays that um, are unexpected and unplanned for and probably unpreventable. So with that in mind, I guess I would press on behalf of the Devons. Um, you know, there can always be more delays. Can we get some cleaning up of the lot to make it? I'm, I'm not asking for a country club look here, Mr. Mr. Boyle. I'm not looking for that at all. Uh, some, something so we get some efforts to clear. I hear you loud and clear that the lot is clear. Can we get rid of the uh, the overgrown condition? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'd be happy to. Thank you very much for that. 
Can I just ask that? Can I add on that, um, Paul? So if you get a permit, are you going to be building this year? Yes. So would that clear up the lot if you stop building? Yes. Yeah. Like it'll look like the house next door. Not right away. I mean, but I'm just saying. Right. I, I think the neighbors' concerns are it's overgrown. It's been. It looks like it's been abandoned pretty much. It, I mean, it looks like it's an empty lot that has yeah. been someone walked away from. And I understand that's the issue of like I'll clean it up. But if you do receive your permit, you're going to start obviously building before, you know, get your foundation in so you can work through the winter. Is, is, is that my understanding? That's correct. Yeah. And that all of that is a is a fair understanding in what I'm just trying to ensure, and I, I think that everybody is is hearing it. You know, there's there's the what if. You know, the the what if we don't get to this, or if what if you know the second wave of COVID hits, or what if we're attacked by aliens? So in the interim, in order to cover the what if scenarios, uh, we're just getting a from the app to, to do some clearing of the overgrown um, conditions. Exactly. That will clearly happen. That will happen. Thank, thank you very much for that. So again, look again, metaphorically looking up and down the table. Any other comments, questions? <laughs> yeah, Paul, this is Steve. And uh, just, I need a couple points clarified for me. So this 100 foot buffer zone, now, uh, the buffer zone starts in the wetlands, and so is uh, is the uh, issue that technically the buffer zone should start after the wet uh, the uh, the conservation the wet uh, the the wetlands is I'm looking for clarification explanation of this, and then I have one other explanation point too. Okay. That that is not that is not the issue that you uh, um, that it's very routine that very typical actually that construction happens in the buffer zone, which is why you have to go to conservation and get the permission. If if the applicant, whether it's myself or anyone else, is doing work outside the buffer zone, they don't even have to go to conservation. It's outside the jurisdiction. So that's the sole reason of conservation to control what happens within 100 feet of the of wetlands. And that's just, again between the no build and the buffer. The first fifty feet, you can't build anything. But between fifty and a hundred, you can. Correct. <clears throat> okay. Well, then the other point I'd like clarified is there's been reference made to some bylaw changes. Now, as I look at in the packet, the chronology of the history of the property. The history of the property, the first entry that I see is December 17th, 2015. And the reference to changes, uh, bylaws or whatever, wherever they took place, I saw reference to the 80s and to the 90s. And so I'm just curious, how does that have any bearing if this started in, the, in 2015? I, I I think it was more or less an interpretation of the bylaw that kind of changed. But those interpretation changes would have been, I mean, there was reference again, three different, two in the 90s and one in the 80s. I mean, so would that interpretation not have preceded the, the beginning of this work? Uh, don't understand the question. Mm, yeah, Paul, uh, yeah, do you want, Brian? Is that... I don't understand the question. Oh. Yeah, I'm not. I, I, I think there were um, previous buildings or properties developed and built where the buffer zone was not, uh, was included in the contiguous buildable lot that were developed. I, I'm not sure if I answered the question. I might not know the answer. Well, I was just, okay. And again, I'm uh, just trying to, when I, 
with reference made to this interpretation, I'm trying to understand what came first, the chicken or the egg here. It seems to me like whatever change has occurred, has taken place before this the acquisition of the lot and the building began. It doesn't look to me like there is anything that has occurred after the fact. Now, I'm not making a judgment. I'm bringing this up to say, am I interpreting this correctly? Uh, I think you are. Okay, thank you. I don't. I don't. So I'm, this, is, this is Paul. I'm always challenged by timelines and historical, um, you know, the, the ins and outs of historical interpretations. I think that in in this case, there they, they may be a little bit of a red herring. I'm, I'm kind of saying that out loud to both the applicant and to Steve, uh, because I think the historical, whatever the historical interpretations have been, the current interpretation we have is that the applicant needs to be before the board in order to get a variance of that CBA, um, yeah, so that the, the due to CBA, the CBA being reduced by the buffer zone. So there's not enough CBA, and I believe whether whether the historical interpretations that were different or not, today we have the code and the interpretation before us. I really feel like an interpretation rather than mere reading. Um, the, a reading of the code suggests that we need this property needs a variance for CBA because there's not enough CBA with you know with the size of the buffer zone area here. So that's I think that's a long way of saying that if we're trying to examine the history of interpretations or history of the code, we we may be spinning our wheels a little bit because that's not necessarily where we are. None of us are back in the 90s or 80s. There's not a lot of relevance there. What goes today is that. Um, we have an application variance regarding CBA. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> all right, I hear silence. I'll look up and down. I, I wish, sure wish we were all in the same room. It's easier with the visuals. Again, looking up and down the table and the additional thoughts, perhaps on that issue or others. Hearing none, perhaps I'll ping uh, Jen, our zoning administrator, and ask, hey, Jen, do we have any other public comments that have come email or otherwise? Yes, we received one email uh, from a William Diadamo. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, his email states, well, it sounds like the new house is going to go on the location of the old house. What is the difference in size between the new one and the old one? And is the new one going to be substantially larger? Thank you, Jen. And thank you, thank you to the questioner. Mr. Byers, Mr. Boyle? No, it, it'll be actually smaller. Can you, can you tell, tell us all what the, what the size of the, the new house will be? Yeah, it, the new house the, with the footprint is close to 4,000 feet. The house next door is like 4,600 square feet. What is the former house? Well, there were three buildings there, so uh, how to say? Are they talking about? Are they talking about the Busby house? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> as I look at the at the diagram, it looks as though the the new house is at least two times the size of the Busby house. That's my visual looking at this uh, diagram. No, I don't, okay. The Busby house was a cape, correct, Brian? That's correct. And, and, and then there was a second detached building at the Busby house in the same area. Are you talking about the garage? Yeah. I don't really know if I would count the garage as a living space in well, terms I, of the old dwelling to the new dwelling. If, if, if you're in a butter and you're concerned about number of buildings and overall footprint, I, they have this similarity, but uh, I'm not in here looking for relief of that. Um, and I think I can, I don't think, I don't think it gets down to the square footage of what this is. I, I think the question more is someone's used to a house being 2,500 square feet and they want to know the difference of 
excluding all the garages and other buildings, accessory buildings on the lot. The actual old house was 2,700 square feet as opposed to the new house being 4,000 square feet. I think that might be more of the question instead of um, going around or if we add up all the buildings. I think it's more of the residential house itself, the visual look at the house. And you're comparing it to the new house that's being next door, which is 4,700 square feet. I yeah. think what the question was is what was there as compared to what's going to be there? That's my interpretation anyways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess, I guess it's gonna be larger because economics, that's why myself and others have not been able to do small hustle like that in 30 some odd years. Yeah, so to, you already had, it's about 4,000 square feet and the Busby house, I don't know what that was a typical Cape, I believe, right? I don't know, yeah. small, yeah. So, so basically, I think the, the question is, so it's going to be twice the size of the house that was there, kind of, or three, you know, two, time, two times the size of the house that was there originally, but Probably. fits in with the house that's next to it. If it, it, it's, it'll be in, in, it will be in keeping with the house that's next to it, other houses in the area, and it's probably going to be close to twice the size of that, you know. All right, well, thank, thank you for that. Thank you, Jen, for the question. Jen, are there any others? No other. Thank you very much. <clears throat> All right, metaphorically looking up and down the at the board, asking if there are any other comments, questions, or ideas, or whether or not we should be moving to uh, deliberations. I've got nothing else. I'm set oh, to move forward. Me, Paul. Excuse me, Paul. We just got a couple that came in. Oh, thank, thank you, Jen. Would you, would you mind yes. rattling, rattling the first one off? Sure, no problem. Um, so William Diadamo again says, so the footprint will be the same, but now multiple stories, so it will look significantly different. So that's his question. Well, yeah. It, uh, it's a cape going to a more of a colonial. Uh, so, yeah. And to to be clear for the board, the applicant and the questioner, the uh, footprints are not identical. So the new house is going in a, a pretty much approximately the same. There is going to be some overlap, but just to be clear with the question. Correct. Footprints are not identical. Co correct. Yeah. This will be facing hillside, as opposed to in the corner the way the Busby house was. And how many how many stories is the new home? Uh, it, it's either going to be a story and a half or a two story. Um, so. It's a cape, sir, a considered story and a half. Colonials are considered two story. All right. Thank you. Anything else from the board on that question from the public? Seeing and hearing none. Uh, Jen, I think you said that there might have been a couple that came in. Is there a second? Yes, there's another question. Um, it's a comment from Lynn Wenzel, and she's at 294 Chestnut Street. Um, she says, I am the neighbor across the street at 294 Chestnut. The Busby house was 900 square feet. A 4,000 square foot house is much larger than the previous house, four times larger. I, I, it was only nine. I, I, was, I finished I, upstairs, I, correct? I, excuse me. I respectfully disagree because the what that person is missing is the Busby house was an unfinished upstairs house. So it was right. nine square feet downstairs without the, the room off the back. So yeah, it was my, an unfinished upstairs on a cape. I don't understand what this has to do with my application. It, it may not have much to do uh, with the application, Mr. Boyle. However, whenever, any, whenever anybody comes in for relief, everything is on the table. Okay. <clears throat> So with that, I think what I'm hearing is that the Busby house may have been a uh, two-story cape. This is yep. going to be 
two-story colonial. The square footage of the Busby home is, you know, of, of, of some unknown quality. We only have, perhaps only have uh, the first floor as livable square footage because the second floor may have been unfinished. Uh, so therefore, in that regard, we have two two-story buildings. We do not know what the delta is between the two square footages other than it is going to be some multiple, probably, I think if we all look each other in the eye, we can say that it's going to be at least two, uh, twice, the new home is going to be at least twice as big as the old home. And I'm happy to be called out if people have different ideas of that. Seeing and hearing none, to the board, is there any other comments uh, or questions regarding this question of the square footage or the size? Seeing and hearing none. Jen, is there is there a third or is that uh, exhaust the emails? That's all, no more. Thanks so much. Then again, returning to the metaphor, looking up and down the table to the board, if there are no further comments, questions, concerns, or ideas, then perhaps we should close this element of the hearing and move to deliberations. So well, I will, moved. I will, yeah, I will move to close like Ron made the motion is that correct yes thank thank you Ron is there a second I'll second thank you very much motion made and seconded I need to call the roll on all the votes uh, uh, Ron hi Alexandria hi Ellen hi I'm an I, and then we're going to move over to Phil Allen's slot. Looks like uh, Mike, you're next. What do you think? Aye. Thank you. Five eyes <clears throat> to close public comment. Now we move to board deliberations. Look up and down the table now, asking the board to speak freely. Any thoughts from y'all? So, I, uh, you know, my I don't know if my interpretation is the way that the people who wrote these buffer laws intended, uh, but it's certainly sort of the way that I view this is that there's sort of two pieces to this. One is, is this house too close to other houses based on what the zoning was intended for? And then the second is, is, is this house too close or, you know, too compressed onto uh, wet conservation land? And I think the first one is pretty straightforward in the sense that the, the spacing between this house and the other houses around it is not any meaningfully amount less than, than what the other houses have. Um, and so from, from that, I feel like it sort of fits in with the intent of the zoning. Um, the second question is whether or not it's, you know, the property is sort of too small for the amount of conservation land that is proximate to it. Um, I'm a little less clear on that, except that the other house that, you know, was part of this multi-lot conglomerate uh, is already much closer to the conservation land and that the, and also that the conservation commission seems to have no problem with this construction. Um, and so those two factors sort of tilt me in a particular direction. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Nanny. Any thoughts on that from the members of the board? Well, I, Alexandria, I think just because the other house may not have run into the same problems that this one is, and the fact that it may go more into conservation shouldn't almost set the decision of what you do with this one. Because I think we look at every single issue that comes before us separately, and the prior one didn't. So <clears throat> I don't know if that, if I give that much weight. I'm also not sure how we deal with the 75% not being met. I'll, I'll offer a couple of quick thoughts. The first one is on Michael on your, your first issue um, regarding, you know, the, the distance between the homes It's just fair to, to point out that we're not there. There are no setback, uh, no setback issues, no setback, um, you know, problems whatsoever. So, there was a certain, uh, look, everything's on everything's on the on the table, but as far as it goes, all the setbacks are satisfied. Um, on the the second issue, um, is the same thing that I I, I this a little bit too. Like, what is what is this application actually all about? Why are we here? And 
I'm not going to pretend to be expert other than to share that I got comfort because if this were, as the applicant were pointing out, if this were in the actual bill zone, having a, a problem, so would bear the board on the planet. On the other hand, this is uh, just in the buffer zone. Now, just, I, when I say just, I'm, I'm kind of putting air quotes around it. Such that the buffer zone is not does not require the same amount of, um, uh, I guess, protection, fealty, uh, to uh, you know, the don't disturb this area, don't build anything here. The, the the buffer is, hey, everybody, take a look at this for a, for a little while. You know, that's not going to be as of right. We're 100 feet from a wetland, um, so let's take a look. The code is not saying no, 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 which is what the no disturbed zone is saying, what the no build zone is saying. What the code is saying is, hey, let's pause. Let's make sure that in the totality of circumstances, we're not running into a problem. So in, in my mind, we are the, this structure, the proposed structure is, is, you know, in relative terms, miles away from the no disturbed zone and is comfortably far from the no, no build zone. I mean, we would only really be talking about those two if the structure were proposed to be actually breaching the line and going into the no build or no disturb. Here we're in the zone, so it's worth taking taking a, a look at the surrounding area, look at the surrounding circumstances um, to determine uh, how much is in jeopardy here. And if somebody who wrote the code, which is what we are all endeavoring to follow, if somebody thought that there should not be a structure in a in no in the in the buffer zone, then that's what they would have written. However, the experts way back when, whether they be political experts or scientific experts or a merger of both, in their wisdom, yeah, you can build in the buffer zone. You just got to be you got to be talking to folks. And in this case, the buffer zone is merely merely a calculation for contiguous building area which is not a, not a huge threat, contiguous building areas to make sure that we don't, uh, as, as Michael was pointing out, we don't wanna to put too many houses in too close a, a, a spot kind of thing. And here we have a, a relatively big lot, 31,000 square feet, uh, just that the, the buffer, the code defines CBA as eliminating the buffer zone from the calculation. Anyway, that's a that's not, when I say anyway, it makes it sound like I actually made a point. I didn't make a point. All I did was kind of share my rambling thoughts on what this actually, what the buffer might be, and how it uh, interplays with a particular application. And in my estimation, uh, as unlearned as it may be, in my estimation, this project is kind of falling comfortably within any tolerances that I would have for the protection of the. Um, because if we're, we're not really, we're not disturbing anything directly, nor are we disturbing, you know, the two, the more protective zones. We're only in a zone that is saying, hey, let's take a look. Anyway, I'll, I'll shut up. Thank you all for enduring me. Hey, Paul, or uh, to the, uh, all the board members. <laughs> so just as I look at the proposed plan, and, I, and again, I'm fixated on this buffer zone, but the reason I'm looking at it is <clears throat> it looks like about 10% of the buffer zone is, is uh, overlapping with the proposed dwelling. So I, it, it's 100 feet, but I mean, it looks like it's 90 feet to me. And again, I don't know the ramifications of it, but I'm, again, I'm looking at it from an interpretation perspective. Am I interpreting this correctly? I'm not sure how to answer that, except the, the buffer zone is, um, you, know, it's, it, you know, it's a zone. So it starts at 50 feet from the wetland and ends 100 feet from the, from the wetland. And the second you go even a square inch into the buffer zone, I think it's a square inch. I think the second you cross into the zone itself, then the conversation begins whether it's whether the structure is entirely in the buffer zone or whether the, you know some small corner of it is, is in the buffer zone um, you know we're, we're we're talking about it we're examining in those the totality of circumstances kind of thing again and I, I don't know if I answered 
what your actual issue is. I'm, I'm mostly just answering my reflexive response. Uh, Paul, this is Frank. Uh, my, my understanding uh, when they do anything in the zone is not just let's take a look, but it also allows the Conservation Commission to place conditions on it to, to protect the wetlands for any, any impact of, um, you know, starting to get close to uh, the actual um, line of the wetland. So I don't know if that there were conditions placed on this by the Conservation Commission but um, they would have had that opportunity to do so. That is, that's a, a sound point. And, and naturally, if there were any conditions, then the applicant would need to be uh, satisfying those conditions or complying with those conditions. <clears throat> Silence. But invites a voice. Uh, if anybody has any any thoughts, whether they're responsive to the most recent point or whether they want to take another direction, please jump right in, folks. So I would agree with your comments, Paul, and Michael's comments. Um, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I have a comfort level about this, given um, you know the discussion that has occurred. It also somewhat reminds me of, again, if I have the timelines correctly, it reminds me of. of a previous situation that we had where because of the timing of different you know uh, in this case a conservation guideline or conservation rule previously it was a zoning rule you actually inhibit somebody's use of the land because of the timing of what occurred and um you know so so that always struck me as kind of an issue of fairness in this case, I think looking upon, you know, what they're planning to do, I think there's, there's not a big issue to me, particularly if conservation has already kind of looked at it and blessed it. Thank you for the perspective, Ron. Uh, Paul, I just want to add, you know, for, for the residents, I think what, what they're seeing is, oh, so you had a small house and now you put in a huge house on a lot and I don't think they're understanding the timeline of well why can they do this and how can they do this so I, I think there might need be more clarification like because of the timeline in the building and how it was approved that this is the reason why um, they're coming here for it you know I, I think as a as a as an abutter looking in saying Oh, this was a quaint little house there. Now it's going to be a huge, you know, another McMansion, not the end of a McMansion, but it, I mean, it's technically 4,000 square feet. Is it's a it's a big house. It's not a gi ginormous house. Will it fit on the lot? It's not compared to what was there. But I think again, if if you look at the timeline and why this was done, and how this was done this way, I think it might clarify the direction of the of the application. Am I hearing an, an action item from you, Ellen? No. Okay. <clears throat> good, because you're good at action items. Yes, I am, but I, I um, would you like me to have an action item? I'm not prepared to have one, though. <laughs> if, you, if you talk amongst yourself for a minute or two, I might be able to. I'll look up and down the table and, and uh, ask anybody on the board any further comments, questions, uh, or concerns. None here. I'm good. I'm all set. All right. I'm hearing a lot of contented, full of information <clears throat> board members at the end of deliberations. I'm happy to, Ellen, take a take a, a five minute recess since that certainly didn't buy you much time. Uh, do you no, wanna... I can get it. I can get it together. Just two more seconds. All right, then while while you do that, perhaps if we were in in the same room, I would be giving an elbow to Ms. Jacobs and saying, Ms. Jacobs, I'm sure there's going to I'm not I'm sure. Let's plan for a motion. 
I was just going to ask about what you would like me to include. I, I, I you know, just, just, I think just stacking up the, uh, you know, all of, all of the uh, exhibits that the applicant, well, at, at a minimum, the plans. Okay, so I don't have to do the letter of authorization or the abutters list. No. Oh, I thought, I thought you were having me do that, Paul. Ms. Jake, Ms. Jake is the acting clerk. She read the notice. Oh. Okay, um, so the plans, I don't need the deed. Yeah, you do not need your property can go, right? Yeah, you know, let's let's recite that. Recite the, the recent the, history of property. Yeah. Okay. Um, the Donahoe survey. Donna, yeah. Both of them are just the one. Yeah, let's so do the both. 24th and a 25th. Okay. Yeah, let's do both of those. Okay. Um, then the plan of land for North Andover. Yeah. I'm assuming the permit to build, we don't have to list. Correct. Uh, and then, do you want the building specification summary or? We can do those. Okay, so we can just all of that. I think. Skip the license. Skip okay. the rating. Skip. What about the ASB Design Group LLC? I am not sure what went to. Oh, there it is. It's, it's after all the drawings. Yeah, all, yes, and any drawing we should certainly list. Okay. Looks like I have duplicate letters. Okay, so the notice. The variants can go. The plan, recent history, Johnny Who letters, that plan and that plan. Okay. Does Ellen have anything she wants to throw in? Or do I need to buy more time? I can look through this again. <laughs> Good teamwork there, Alexandra. No, I think I think you have everything. Um, the only thing I didn't hear you mention was the. Winslow Drive Realty Group, that one, that letter from September 10th. Um, letter of our, um, no, you don't need that with uh, the um, attorney guys. That was the authorization letter. Yeah. Okay. Everything else I have, you have. Awesome. And we will be um, are proposing a, a condition regarding a clearing of the overgrowth. Probably when we get the applicant. Okay. I'm going to ask for, I should have asked way back when we were talking about it, but I omitted it until I started thinking about the decision. And if we're going to add a condition, then I'd like to put some kind of a timing element to uh, the cleaning up of the overgrown conditions. Um, we have no more fish, then why don't we come out and I can ask the applicant that question. But if we do have any more deliberations or comments, questions or concerns, Seeing and hearing none, then I will ask Mr. Byers, uh, Mr. Boyle, regarding the clearing of the overgrown conditions or cleaning up, clearing sounds so complete, the cleaning up of or addressing the overgrown conditions, what kind of a timeline would you be comfortable with putting in the decision? 30 days, is that okay? That seems ration, rational to me. I'm but sorry, they, what was that date? Within, uh, within 30 days. 30, 30 days, okay. But then, you know, then we'll have to do some arithmetic regarding the, uh, you know, the, the filing dates and all that kind of stuff. 30 days. How about we say um, November at 20? How about November, November 20th? So I think it takes us 10 or 14 days to get this thing out the door, and then the applicant got to get it recorded and all that stuff, and then kind of the clock starts running. Why don't Paul? Why don't you do the 30 days after filing? 30 days after filing. Instead of putting a, uh, a definite date on, so if you do the 30 days after filing, I, I think you might be safe. Okay. Are we sure? Do we want to change one more time? Uh, no. Okay. With that again, look up. This is last last chance board members. Uh, look down the table. Any other comments? Otherwise, I will ask for a motion. All right, Ms. Jacobs, how about a motion? 
I make a motion to approve the variance submitted by the Winslow Drive Realty Group LLC, Brian J. Boyle, manager for the property located at 303 Chestnut Street, also known as Lot 1 Hillside Road, Map 098B, Parcel 0008, North Anna, Mass 01845, in the R3 Zoning District. Um, pursuant to section 195-7.1A for contiguous, contiguous building area CBA in the R3 zoning district for the purpose of reconstructing a single family home on a vacant lot, specifically applicant requested CBA needing a release variance of seven, 5,718 square feet. And the CBA required, required is 18,750 square feet. Uh, referencing the proposed plan for 303 Chestnut Street done by the Donahue Survey Inc. Company dated September 8, 2020. The re recent history of property going from 1950 to August 27, 2020. The Donahue Survey Inc. letter dated August 25, 2020. Donahue Survey Letter Inc. Letter dated August 24th, 2020. The plan of land done by the Donahue Survey Inc. dated December 7th, 2015. And the plan by ASD Design Group LLC dated 4-16-2020 with the condition that the applicant clear up any overgrow within 30 days after filing. I, I may have been shuffling papers, Andrea. Did you do the um, uh, uh, the, the, for the home as well, the Amanda Roba showed? I'm sorry, the what? Amanda Robichaud, designer, A1, I don't have that in my packet, so I did not include that. Ellen, do you have, do you have anything? I do. I have them right here, so I can reference those. Can I just add to the um, decision of the um, Amanda L. Robichaud design uh, uh, sheet number A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6, A7, A8, um, the ASB design group dated... Um, Four sixteen twenty. Yeah, that one I added. Okay. I think that's everything that I see for pitching in, Ellen. All right. So I think that with the with the motion, the recitation of the exhibits and the condition, motion is made by Ms. Jacobs. Is there a second? I didn't hear the condition. What was the? I didn't. Oh, yeah. condition to clear up any overgrow within thirty days of filing. I'll make a second to that. Motion made and seconded, and I will. Oh, you know what? I should have done this first. Hey, uh, Jen, who is the the next vote from the associate side of the ledger? Steve uh, Tidy. Steve. All right, well, Steve, we will start with you. Motion made and seconded. Okay, um, I'm a yay. Thank you, Steve. Ron? I am also an aye. Ms. Jacobs, your, your vote? No. Ms. McIntyre? Yes. I am an I. So the ayes have it. The variances are vote to four, two, one. Thanks very much, Mr. Byers. Thank you, Mr. Boyle. Thank you all. Thank you. 
Mr. Chairman? Mr. Chairman, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Um, with, with the, I appreciate the, uh, the the vote, but if if I come back to the building inspector with a smaller house, would that would that is is that do I have to come back in front of the board if it's a, in a smaller home? Uh, I oh I I think so. Okay. Well, Apollo, you sure because he's de decreasing the uh CBA. So he approved for 23%. If he comes back and needs 15%, wouldn't would he need another variance? Well the 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 the, the variance is for the CBA, which will not change. Correct. Because Correct. By the um, home so the what the what the applicant is asking is, hey, hey Mr. Chair, you just uh, had a had a vote and approved a variance uh pursuant to the plans and exhibits, you know. Correct. So with the application, if we change any of the exhibits that were supplied with the application on which your vote was based, Mr. Chair, do I need to come back? And I, I certainly appreciate the detail that if you go smaller, then you know there's there's something uh, intuitive about saying, well, why would I need to come back if I'm actually going smaller than what we asked for? And since I don't know the answer to, answer to that question sitting here before you, Mr. Boyle. Um, Perhaps we can go one of two paths is we can perhaps postpone. Well, actually just held the vote. So we can't. I don't want to postpone it. No, I don't want to postpone it. I just. Yeah. <laughs> then my question yeah, would be to uh, perhaps have Mr. Byers um, either do a little research or call town council to see uh, what the what the effect could be. But there, there very well may be an administrative amendment to a decision that could occur. Uh, and Paul, I, I think what happens is uh, it's just you go to the building inspector, and if it's a minor, if it's a depends if it's a, considered a major or minor modification, the minor modification. We we went through that. I've been through that on your end too, so we can always talk to Paul about that. Paul Hudson. But it doesn't the board determine if it's if it's a minor or major modification, so you'd have to come before yes. the board anyways. Yes. Yes. You are correct, Ellen. All right. So then. if it's a, if it's a smaller house and he comes before you guys and you just say, well, you know, it doesn't change anything really, other than making the house smaller, then you you would decide. You're right. If it's a minor modification or major, if it's major, you have to reapply and start all over again. Which, right. which is, it's a it's a crazy process because if we determine that it's a major modification, you're sitting at a meeting. And then you're going to be another month behind because you have to apply again. Yeah, you have to start all over. Exactly. I, I'll I'll talk to Brian off off air, but yeah, I, we'll we'll take the four to one vote. All right. Well, then, thank you, Mr. Byers. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay. Bye bye. Great night for the for the board and everybody else. That that appears to be the end of the uh, agenda. So if there's a motion to adjourn, sure would love to hear it. I, I move that we adjourn. I will second. Oh boy, who was the first? I, I couldn't tell. That's Mike. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. And the second was? Ron. Thank you, Mike and Ron. I will go, uh, Frank. Uh, I, yes. <laughs> Thanks, Ron. Yes. Alexandria? Yes. Ellen? Yes. I'm an I. We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>